But we're to the what I believe is the most important part of the service today, uh, and that is we're going to get into God's Word and spend a little time just focusing on what He has for us today. You know, we do take it pretty serious around here that uh, God has promised, He has promised us as His people that He would provide an on-time Word for us. His Word says that He will give us pastors and shepherds that will lead us and feed us according to His Word. We take all of that very seriously. Uh, and so I believe the Lord has a word for us today. I know you've stood up a whole lot, but we want to honor God's word for the reading of the word, and I'm going to ask you to stand with me, and then you can sit down for the rest of the time. From Luke chapter 10, reading to you a story of the ministry of Jesus. And it says, And Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. And behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus, which was the chief among the publicans, and he was rich. And he sought to see Jesus, who he was, and he could not for the press because he was of little stature. And he ran before and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him, for he was to pass that way. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and saw him and said unto him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down, for today I must abide at thy house. And he made haste and came down and received him joyfully. And when they saw it, they all murmured, saying that he was gone to be guest with a man that is a sinner. And Zacchaeus stood and said unto the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor. And if I have taken anything from any man by false accusation, I restore him fourfold. And Jesus said unto him, This day is salvation come to this house. For as much as he also is a son of Abraham. For the son of man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. I'm going to read that last verse again. But essentially what Jesus said is this whole thing that's happened is just demonstration of this truth right here. For the son of man is come. To seek and to save that which was lost. Bow with me for prayer. Father, thank you for your word today. Thank you for your promises and your presence here in our midst today. Lord, I ask that you help me to bring what you have assigned for us today. And I pray, Lord, that you would... Help every person to have uh, a hearing ear and an open heart to all that you would say and do for all of us today. Lord, do what only you can do, and we'll give you thanks for it. In Jesus' name, amen. And you can be seated. Well, I usually give a message a title, so I just simply title this one, Found. I started to call it Lost and Found and put a sign up there like you see sometimes when you're, uh, you know, in a public place and some things have been located and returned. But have you ever lost something? I know it's a silly question. If you're like me, nowadays, probably every day, you could say, yep, maybe several times a day. Have you ever been around somebody that could have something in their hand one minute and the next minute have no idea where it is? Well, you're around somebody like that today. You're looking at one. Have you ever been around somebody that could lose something and be looking right at it? Yeah. 
Oh, there's some stories that come out right here. You know, I do pretty good work as long as I have two or three people that are assigned just to help me keep up with my tools. But have you ever lost something that was just really important and, you know, maybe something you haven't seen for quite a while, but now you've got to have it like a passport or maybe you're late to get somewhere and you've lost your keys. That's a pretty regular thing. Uh, maybe you are someone else put it in a safe place so safe can't nobody find it now but sometime when something gets lost it, it, it takes a miracle to find it but I want to assure you something. When, whenever something gets lost, I know somebody that always knows where it is. God knows where it is. The angels on assignment, they know what it is. I don't know about you, but every once in a while, I, I, now I make a point to, you've you got to do this in faith. You can't just do it and think, oh, I'm, it's lost. But you say, Lord, I really need you to help me find this. You know where it is? Show me. Remind me what I did with it. You remember the story in the Bible about the borrowed axe head? Elisha's servant was cutting a tree. And he had borrowed an axe. The head flew off of it and went in the river. And he called out to the prophet. He said, well, King James says, alas, it was borrowed. I, I've lost the, the axe head. And Elisha went, and the miracle happened. The axe head came to the surface. I said, sometimes it requires a miracle. Sometimes finding stuff requires even more of a miracle than we realize. That's what this story is about that we read in the Bible. It speaks of Jesus traveling to Jericho and there was a crowd of people thronging out to see him and to hear him teach you know in the stories that we read in the Bible uh, in the Gospels it seems like wherever Jesus was and wherever he was preaching or teaching there was always a crowd of people that were pressing in to get close to him whether or not people realize it today or not, there is a drawing to Jesus. I don't know if you realize it or not, but there is a drawing to Jesus. Jesus said, if I am lifted up, making reference to being placed on the cross, he said, if I am lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. So there's a spiritual draw sometimes that's taken place, whether we realize it or not. But, but God has placed it there, a desire and a need within the soul of every man for, to have a right relationship with him. When you come into contact with the presence of Jesus, even like you've been come into contact with the presence of the Lord here today, something is drawing you close to Him. Folks, I want to encourage you just to accept the fact today, we all need Jesus. We all need Him. There, life, life itself is missing a key element without Him at the center of our lives. We could say it like this, God created us. We were born with a void that only Jesus Christ can fill. That's true of every person. There's an empty spot in our hearts that only Jesus can make whole and complete. Nothing else in this world 
will fill that void in life. Nothing. Oh, I know, maybe like I did at one time, maybe you have tried this. Everybody seems to try this. People try to fill that void with every imaginable thing. But regardless of what you try to fill it with, there is still that realization that there is an empty spot on the inside. The day that we read about, there was a man, little in stature, but big in status. He was experiencing this draw to Jesus that we're talking about. He didn't understand all he knew about it, but he did understand this. He knew that there was something telling him that he needed to get closer to the Lord. And when the circumstances and the venue limited his access, he began to make some arrangements. You know, as a pastor especially, I love it when men and women begin to take steps to close the gap between them and God. I love to see people reach a point in life that they stop running from God and decide that it's time to start running to God. I love it when I see people that are willing to go out of their way a little bit to move closer to God. There were some things blocking Zacchaeus approached that day, but he wouldn't let it stop him. He went ahead of the crowd, and the Bible says he, he climbed up in a sycamore tree so he could get a bird's eye view when Jesus came near. I want to assure you something. Anytime you make a single move, a single step with the intention of moving a little closer to God, he makes steps to move closer to you. James 4, 6 says, it's a promise. It says, draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh to you. Now Zacchaeus was searching for Jesus that day, but guess what? Jesus was searching for him. That's the thing I really want us to get today if we don't get anything else, whether we're conscious of it or not, we are searching for Jesus and the life that only he can give. But more importantly, he is searching for us. His goodness is running after us. The key verse in our passage today said this, For the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. He came to seek and to save. We've already said that whether we're conscious of it or whether it's a subconscious thing, you are seeking, you, you are seeking Jesus and what you need him to do in your life. And he said, if I'm lifted up, I will draw men unto me. He is drawing you and whether or not you realize it or not today, you should be really happy about that. I know I was stupid one day. One, one, one time years ago, I used to get under conviction and know I needed to get my life right with the Lord. And I would sense His Holy Spirit convicting me and drawing me. And I would think, oh, I wish I didn't, I wish I didn't feel that way. I wish I could just have a good time. But now I understand that it was the goodness of God. It's the goodness of God that leads us to repentance. Coming to Jesus, though, is not something that you just decide to do. It's not something that you do on your own power. See, we got to get oh, we got to get over some stuff on that too, because sometimes we just think. You know, we're just so big and proud and we're, we're so full of it that we think, you know, I'm going to do it my way. Well, there's a lot of things about this Christian walk. I, I used to say that about in my life too. 
I'm going to do it when I'm ready to do it. I'm going to do it the way I'm wanting to do it. I'm going to do it when I want to do it. None of that applies. None of that applies. We can't do this on our own. We can't do it on our own power. Jesus said, no man cometh to the Father but by me. But here's how we do it. We move close to God and we find a right relationship with God and we come into the will of God by the grace of God. The grace of God, purely. It's His goodness that leads us there and gives us the ability. Grace is God's ability on our behalf to do what would otherwise be impossible. It's by His grace and mercy that we have the opportunity to know Him in the power of having our sins forgiven and receive His eternal life. But I I really want to help us all today because, you see, God has set His love on you. Now, sometimes, again, can't nobody but the Holy Spirit convinced somebody of that. Because sometimes I'll say, God loves you, and sometimes people say, oh, you don't understand. He might love nice church folks, but he don't love me. No, he loves you. He loves you. He sent Jesus to die for you. The word says he didn't come to call the righteous. He came to call the sinners to repentance. Amen? That's what it said. So he came to seek and to save the lost. That day he came under that sycamore tree that Zacchaeus was in and he offered to come to his house. That day salvation came to the home of Zacchaeus to the surprise of everybody that witnessed it. Matter of fact, a bunch of them standing around murmured and said, can you believe that? Jesus is going over there to that sinner's house. Why does he want to hang out with him? Because he loves him. Because he was fixing to die for him. Because he wanted to get him to heaven where he would live forever. That's why. Listen, Jesus didn't come to save perfect people. He came to save sinners. He came to seek and save Zacchaeus. He came to where he was. And he came to where you are today. To offer you salvation. I want to assure you of something. You can't run so far. And hide so good that Jesus won't come to you. The Bible shows us that Adam and Eve sinned and they went and hid in the garden. That's what it says in Genesis. But in the cool of the evening, God came to the garden just like he always had before they sinned. He came to the garden And he came through the garden calling out, Adam, where are you? I still want to hang with you, Adam. I'm still God to you, Adam. I still got good things for you, Adam. He knew where Adam was. Adam wasn't lost to God. Adam was just lost. And God wanted Adam to realize where he was. God called Jonah, and he told Jonah what to do. And the Bible says that Jonah went in the opposite direction and went just as far as he could go, but he couldn't hide from God. God knew exactly. Listen to what the psalmist said. Whither shall I go from thy spirit, or whither shall I flee from thy presence? If I ascend up into a heaven, there you, thou art there. 
If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there shall thy hand lead me and thy right hand shall hold me. I need you to just recognize today, you can't run hard enough or far enough to outrun the love of God. You can't do it. Because he came to seek He'll look, he'll look till he finds you. He came to seek and to save the lost. He came to seek and to save you. And guess what? We used to sing an old song. He's passing by this way. He passed by close to you today. He's drawing close to you. Can I tell you that it's a wonderful thing to just be found? Of the Lord. It's a wonderful thing to stop running and allow Jesus to save you and to fill your life. It's been a long time ago, about 50 years actually, a little over 50 years, but I vividly remember the day that I just told the Lord, I said, Okay, Lord, I'm done running. I can't live like this anymore. I need you. I need you, God. My life is such a mess. I can't straighten it out. I don't know how to begin to try. Everything I try to do to straighten it out seems to make it worse. I'm done, God. I need you. Will you save me? And he did. That's what he came for. To seek and to save the lost. He came to save you too. He wants the very best for you. He wants you to have an eternity with him in heaven. He wants to save you from hell. He wants to walk with you through this life. And bless your life. And he wants you to really truly feel the confidence of being able to say. Because God is for me. Who could possibly be against me? If God be for us. Who could be against us? God wants you. To live in the peace of God. Of being right with God. I'm going to tell you today. And I feel like there's a lot of people in this house today. That can tell you. There's nothing like that. The world is going crazy. But in the middle of it all. We can have peace like a river. And joy like a fountain. Because Jesus is right here. And when he, one of the last things he said to his disciples before his ascension, he said, my peace I give you. My peace I leave with you. The peace of God that passes all understanding. Zacchaeus. was found because he found Jesus and Jesus found him. So in closing today, I want to say that Jesus, true to his word, I'll promise you this, he's searching for you. He's coming close to you. I believe that the Holy Spirit, because it's what God's word said, and it, you know, heaven and earth will pass away, but his words will not. It's true. His word said that his Holy Spirit would draw you. And I wonder today, do you feel the draw? Do you feel the draw? Because he's seeking a personal relationship. He wants to save you. And he will if you'll just do like old Zach did. 
when Jesus said, I want to come to your house. And old Zach said, I'm honored, Lord. Won't you come on into my house? All you've got to do is say, Lord, I sent you right here. I sent you drawing me and knocking on my heart's door. I sense that empty spot this preacher is talking about. And I somehow believe that you fit right there. I'm going to invite you in today. That's all you got to do is welcome him in. Here's the question. Are you willing to do that? You've taken some steps to get here today. Zacchaeus took some steps to climb up in that tree. Here's the thing as we close out today that I've got to ask you. Are you willing to take one more little simple step of faith to let Jesus take his place in your life? I'm going to ask you to stand to your feet. I've asked the media team. I don't know if that projector will work on the video or not. If it don't, we'll just listen to the audio. But there's going to be a, a song played right now. As we stand here, I want you just to listen to the words of the song. And I want you to ponder what has just been said. Jesus is close. Will you open the door and let him in? Softly and tenderly, Jesus is calling, calling for you and for me. See on the portals, he's waiting and watching, watching for you and for me. Come home, come just for a moment that nobody's moving around here I lit a candle a while ago some of you may have wondered why we light this candle the last three weeks when we got to this part in our service 
and we got ready to pray the sinner's prayer, we had people that indicated that they wanted to pray that prayer with us. We all prayed it together, but it was the first time they were joining in. They indicated that they felt led to do that. We call that candle the salvation candle. It's just a thing that this church celebrates when someone truly does come home to a right relationship with God, gets their life on track, receives God's gift of eternal life. And we acknowledge that by lighting this candle to remind us that Jesus is still drawing people and he's still saving people. And I believe he wants to do that today. In a moment, we're going to pray the sinner's prayer together. And this may be different from any time you've ever been to church. I don't know. Now, if you want to come to this altar, you can. But you can do this right where you're standing. We're not going to single you out. We're not going to come back to you or anything like that. We're all going to pray this prayer together. The people that have already prayed it are going to pray it kind of in unison just to be a support system for you taking this step of faith. All you really need to do is join in and mean it from your heart. And God's going to see that heart. He's going to hear your prayer. And what we're going to do is I'm going to lead the prayer and we're going, to ask, we're going to invite Jesus into our hearts. If that's something today, while heads are bowed, eyes are closed, you're here today, and you'd say, Pastor, count me in. I'm going to pray with you today. Would you slip your hand up where you are? Just put it up, back down. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Others. All this means is, I heard the Lord today. I'm going to take this I'm going to take this simple little step with you guys. I'm going to pray and ask Jesus into my life today. You need to be a part of it. Is God dealing with your heart? Do you feel the draw today? Aren't you ready to quit running? I don't know why you would run. You're running from the best thing. I listened to a song this morning while I was uh, getting ready before church today. This lady sang this song, said, Jesus is the best thing that ever happened to my life. That is so true. You're being offered today the very best thing. We're going to pray. Would you pray with us? Heavenly Father, I come to you today in Jesus' name. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for seeking me out and coming to save me. So, Lord, today, I'm going to take a step towards you. I'm going to open my heart, and I'm going to invite you in. I want you to fill that empty spot. I need you, Lord. Please forgive my sins. Be my Savior. Thank you for hearing my prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I want to assure you something. If you prayed that prayer in a minute, he meant what he said. He's going home with you today if you prayed that prayer. Just like he did old Zacchaeus. I'm going to your house today. <laughs> it sure has been a joy being with you today. Thank you again for coming. If this is your first trip to Valley Harvest, we hope it'll be the first of many. 
If you prayed that prayer with us to receive Christ today, please let one of the pastors know, okay? We ain't going to bug you, but we, we do want to help you get started off right. 